In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a child theme in 2017, including cache busting code that will get around a nasty bug in Chrome and some other browsers where it caches information for too long. You'll be updating the CSS, but you won't see updates on your actual website, which can be really frustrating. We're going to get started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more stuff for you. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and learn how to build these cache busting child themes. I'll see you there. So to get started with creating this child theme, we first have to have an active theme on the site. On this example, we have the 2017 theme and we're gonna make a child for that. But the same process will work for the Aveda theme, Divi theme, Toko Online theme, which are the examples I have on this site. Pretty much any theme out there, you can create a child theme using these exact same steps. And what I like to do is just go and check out the site before I create the child theme. So we're gonna do that by just clicking this button here and here's what it looks like. So this is the, the site without the child theme. This is the parent theme page. So now I'm gonna create the child theme. You can follow along step by step if you want to. I'm gonna head over to the file manager by clicking on the file manager inside the cPanel. This also works via FTP if you want to do it that route. Head into the root of the website, then to the WP content folder, themes folder, and this is where we're going to create the child theme because it's a theme, so it's in the themes folder. So the first step, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it the, almost the same as the original. I'm going to call it 2017-child. Now the dash child is not strictly required, but it keeps you organized. I like to add the dash child at the end. WordPress recommends it as well. Just a smart move. Create that folder. Now we go into this folder and we create two files inside of here. One is style.css. The other is functions.php. Now these are the only two files required for a child theme, but we do have to add some code to them. So I'm gonna click on the CSS of the style sheet first open it in the code editor. I'm gonna copy over this code right here. This is from the WordPress codex, or you can get it from the blog post I linked to down below. But essentially, it just gives some information about the theme. So the very first one is gonna be the name of the theme inside of the theme dashboard in WordPress. Second one is gonna be a link to an example of the theme. This one's a dummy link, doesn't actually work. But if your theme does, add in the correct link. The description will be in there as well. The author would be you if you're creating this child theme. So you can put yourself in there or whoever else you want. And this is a link to the author's website if they have one. The most important part is that you have this template correct. This is 2017 all one word lowercase and it matches exactly the name of the parent folder. 2017 all one word lowercase. So you wanna make sure that this template line and this text after the colon matches the parent theme folder name exactly, otherwise this won't work. Version number is very important for cache busting, which we're gonna cover in just a minute. The license, whenever we're linking or tapping into WordPress hooks via the functions file or anything like that, we have to follow the GNU general public license version two or later. So there's that information there, a link to the license here. If we're gonna upload this theme to the repository, these tags help WordPress organize the theme and list it in the right place. And then we also have the text domain, which is just another name for the theme. And then down here is where our styles will go. Currently there are no styles, as you can see. So we're gonna save this. What we're gonna do is activate the child theme and then refresh that main page to see what it looks like without styles. So after that bit of work that we did, we have the child theme added right here. We can click on activate, head back out to the page we loaded earlier, refresh it, and we'll see what it looks like without styles, and this is how it looks. Not the most beautiful thing in the world. And we're gonna fix that in just a second. So we're gonna head back into our file manager and open the functions.php file in the code editor. I'm gonna copy another piece of code from the codex, which is this. And this goes into the functions file. And basically what it does, it enqueues the style sheet from the parent theme and it also appends a version number at the end, which we're gonna use for cache busting. And this was actually in the repository for the 2015 theme. I'm just gonna update it to 2017. 
It's not strictly required because this is a comment. So this code here is not actually executed, but for documentation purposes, it's smart to update everything to whatever you're doing specifically. Click on save changes, refresh this child theme page and it should look a lot better. In fact, it looks pretty much exactly how the parent theme looked. Almost. The spacing here is a little different. It actually looks better the child theme than did on the parent theme because I messed around with that CSS previously. Neither here nor there, we now have a child theme that functions very well. One cool addition you can make is this thumbnail currently is just a, a blank. You can actually add your own custom thumbnail. And all you have to do to do that is inside this folder, we upload a picture file called screenshot.png. It's got to be 880 pixels by 660 pixels, even though it's resized to smaller. So I'm just going to click on this upload button here to upload the image that I made. And it's uploaded, goes pretty quick. Now if we reload, we have our screenshot.png right here. If I go back into the theme manager, and refresh the page, we now have this cool tiger with the text child theme on there. And that's how you add a thumbnail to your custom theme. The thumbnail can be whatever you want. This is just what I chose to create. And now we're gonna get into the cache busting functionality because if we don't do that, with today's browsers, they cache style sheets and they hang on to them. So you can be trying to make changes to your CSS, but nothing's happening on the front end. It's because it's cached. For example, let's just inspect this big header up here. And it is under masthead. And let's just say display none. So it disappears. So if we apply the CSS to our style sheet to the masthead, it should, be, it should disappear, but it won't. And you're going to see that. I'm going to prove that right now. Head over to the style sheet and put in here ID masthead and then display none. Save changes. And then I'll go ahead and close this. I'll refresh this page and this should be gone. This whole image should be gone. But it's not, it persists. Refresh it again. It's still there. Refresh it again. It's still there. Because the CSS is cached in the browser. I have no caching plugins running on this site. How we fix that is by changing the version number. So up here, we have version 1.0.0. If we go to the source of this page, we will see, if we look up style.css we see our child theme style right here at the end it says version 1.0.0 now if we change this version number to 1.1.1 save changes refresh this page we now have version 1.1.1 the browser sees this as a new file name, a new file, different file, so it reloads it. Now if we head back to here and refresh this page, this will not disappear, the whole header image. And there we have it, the header is gone. This is the very top of the page, I can't go any higher. Because we busted the cache, it reloaded that those new instructions, and then it actually applies the CSS. Now even with that, it still doesn't work every time. So sometimes, you have to use a different browser, you have to use incognito mode, or you have to empty the cache and cookies of the browser manually. And that's just the environment we're working in with today's browsers. They're trying to be very smart and increasing page load times by not reloading the style sheets all the time, but it makes development a little trickier. That's how we build a child theme with cache busting code. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos that appear on the right hand side so you can learn even more, get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.